call him Ken Rockburn. In late 1968 and early 1969, the province of Ontario created the regional municipality of Ottawa Carleton. The six urban locations outside of the Greenbelt in the regional plan were stacked up against one another, and only two of them received an A rating, the highest rating given. Those two were Canada Glen Cairn in the West End, and this area, Carlsbad Springs. But in spite of all this evidence, Regional Council has decided to select the South Growth Area as a priority location and leave Carlsbad Springs for something they call future development. We look at, uh, I guess, the first thing would be environmental factors, and they can be broken down into quite a number of uh, uh, factors uh, or aspects. Uh, we look at the amount of agricultural land that would be affected, uh, things like the uh, whether there are any important mineral aggregates, uh, if there are any sensitive areas that will be affected. Uh, we'd uh, also look at things like the uh, development implications. Uh, we'd take a look at uh, how, f how expensive it would be to develop the services uh, to service areas such as uh, water and sewer trunks, uh, the major transportation routes, both uh, public transit and the roads. And we look at uh, the cost that it might uh, uh, that might be incurred to develop in the area, such as uh, if there's a rock near the surface, it would be expensive to build the houses. Uh, if there were poor subsurface conditions, that might be uh, very expensive to overcome. And uh, we also look at whether there's been commitments made in the area, such as uh, registered uh, plans of subdivision or possibly draft approved, things like zoning commitments. Those are taken into consideration. Um, We'd also look at the ownership of the land to uh, see if it's public or private. Uh, uh, that, that's an important factor. Ever since Regional Council selected the South Growth Area as a priority development area over Carlsbad Springs, the objections have been flying fast and furious. And you'll notice that the noise cone affects a good-sized portion of the low- and middle-income areas. Now, these are just some of the criticisms that have been leveled at the South Growth Area as a development site. The supporters of the area feel that all of these problems can be overcome in one form or another. You know, we were very much aware from the outset of the proposed expansion of the airport. Carlsbad Springs is publicly owned land. The South Growth area is not. And this has led to a number of accusations to the effect that Regional Council and even the Provincial Ministry of Housing are at the beck and call of the major housing developers. And thus we would have a great circle circling both the cities of Ottawa and Hull so you could drive around and around again and never have to stop unless you wanted food and gas. I think the problem here is a confusion in land use principles. They're, they're confusing two different types of things in as much that if you refer to the regional plan, it's, it's very obvious since uh, on the conservation and recreational maps, this is clearly designated as a conservation area, as is Britannia Park, as, a, as an important regional recreational resource. That vote ended in a tie. The tie was broken by Regional Chairman Dennis Cooligan, the only member of Regional Council not elected by the residents of the Ottawa Carlton area. He voted to keep the arterial. Most of the transportation will be done by public transport. It's on the old railway right of way that is already going through the community and has gone through the community for some time. Incidentally, the completed section hasn't been standing up well, and recently Regional Council had to allocate $1,000 for engineering studies to try and solve the problem of asphalt heaving. The section of the Vanier arterial that will cut through Overbrook has residents of that area up in arms. To find out why, we talked to Louise Gagné of the Overbrook Community Council. Well, I think the arterial is going to affect Overbrook because it is going to bisect Overbrook and it will affect very highly the quality of living of the Overbrook community. Along this um, specific point, you do have five to seven school. Overbrook also carries a very, uh, the highest percentage of senior citizens. Uh, the RTL is a project of four to six lane. That's not definite yet, and there is no pedestrian crosswalk uh, design. I feel it is impossible for those people, children and elderly people, to cross on a safe way those main artery. The regional plan will have an effect on the business community in Ottawa Carlton as well. The regional plan calls for a 55% of any new developments being ground oriented with half of that amount in singles or semi-detached housing. Uh, we feel that this is too restrictive we are depriving many people from owning their own home. 
those studies were made before we knew that a number of our uh, departments were being transferred out of the city of Ottawa. Oh, uh, I don't see how we can possibly agree or disagree with that figure without knowledge of what the federal government is going to do. They are creating a ghost town out of the center of the city. They have transferred departments right out of Ottawa. Elspeth Menendez is the president of the Federation of Citizens Associations of Ottawa Carleton. The Federation has come under fire by several regional politicians about their objections to the regional plan. I think it's a very responsible attitude uh, of citizens to look at more than their, just their uh, yard and their street and their neighborhood. It gets rid of um, so many of the worst problems of development and speculation. There is a great uh, need to maintain agricultural land, and that's only done through, through land use policies. And also you have to maintain your recreational uh, areas and maintain the natural environment. You can only do this, uh, I think, through a, uh, through a plan. The regional plan is indeed a very good plan. It's the, uh, it's the only plan that's been produced for the region. It's one that's taken some four years. It's been done by people who are experienced in this kind of work, and they aren't, there aren't many. Uh, it has also been done with a great deal of public input, both before the plan was developed and after the plan was developed. Everybody's in favor of a good arterial roadway, provided it doesn't go near where you live. Uh, you're, you're all in favor of having arterial roads, but it mustn't be along our particular street. And this is uh, quite natural. And the fact of it is that it would be it would be hard to say that it was good for the region as a whole, unless people who were looking at it narrowly did object. We've tried tonight to take a look at at least some of the aspects of the regional plan. We didn't have time to look at them all, of course. We didn't take a look, for instance, at the rapid transit proposals in the plan. We didn't take uh, any look at daycare facilities that will be made available. We didn't look at water and sewage treatment. There are many, many other things in the regional plan that we couldn't look at because of the time restriction of the program. We hope, however, that we have provided something that's been of interest to your community and perhaps provided an incentive to take a look at the regional plan to see what it has in store for your particular neighborhood. You may be surprised at what you find. Politicians have been extolling the virtues of public participation for a long time now, but it's only the citizens who can make sure that public participation becomes more than just another empty sounding platitude. I'm Ken Rockburn. Thanks for watching.